Fitting is difficult. No number of fitting books, classes, and guides that you've purchased with the words fast, quick, or easy in the title is going to change that fact. Fitting is a process that takes time to perfect and a skill that is acquired through study and experience. I'm Alexander Morgan from In-House Patterns and In-House Pattern Studio. I create digital sewing patterns and teach experienced sewers and budding pattern makers how to make and adjust patterns for fit and style. You'll find loads of inspiration and insight on fitting and pattern making at inhousepatternsstudio.com. Now I've studied fitting for a very long time. It wasn't until I started using vertical and horizontal balance lines on my garments that I truly began to understand how to make sewing patterns fit me. Now these markings made it so much easier to understand the origin and nature of fitting issues and eliminated the confusion of trying to read the wrinkles. Now once I started focusing on the balance of the garment on on my body, the wrinkles would just magically disappear. Now, when you draft a pattern to your personal body measurements, these vertical and horizontal balance lines are the foundation of the pattern. But what do you do if you are using a commercial sewing pattern? Well, this month, I'm going to share two tutorials that will show you how to prepare a regular commercial sewing pattern for fitting and help you find those balance lines. Now, this week, we're starting with a shift dress, and next week, I'll share what it might look like on a flare jacket with a raglan sleeve. So we're going to start off first with this little dress here. So this is a really basic dress, and you'll see that it has two front vertical darts, and it has a horizontal dart, which is the bust dart there. And we're going to be working with those pattern pieces for the dress first. Now, what I want to do first is definitely draw out all of your seam allowances. So in other words, draw in the seam lines of the pattern so that you know exactly where to start and stop your measurement process. The next thing is to find your balance lines and some other critical measurement points that you can. So as I said, this particular pattern is quite easy to find them on because you can see here that I've got the bust position marked, I've got a waist position marked, and I also have a hip position marked. So the bust is probably the most confusing, which I'm going to get to, but let's talk about the waist and the hip. So you can see here that the waist marking is right here. So all I've done here is taken my grid ruler and I have lined up one section of the ruler. So in other words, the edge of the ruler here and I've, the other part of the ruler is going straight through the waistline marking here. And what I wanna do is draw my waistline perpendicular from the center front line. So this is the center front line and it's on fold. So I'm going to just draw that in, which I've done there. This particular style, that works really well because it's a straight sort of shift style, which resembles very closely to any sort of basic block. The same will go here for the hip. So all I've done here is again, drawn a perpendicular line from center front that crosses through the hip line. Now, if your style has any amount of flair in it, uh, which we'll be covering a little bit later, you can't draw a straight line and you're going to discover why when we go over the jacket pattern. of The bust becomes just a little bit of conf confusing in certain circumstances and that's simply because of the bust dart. The bust dart sort of complicates this line because it is below the armhole. When you have a dart below the armhole, the bust position changes. So in other words, you can't just draw a straight line right across the pattern. You actually have to pitch that bust line up. So I wanna show you how you can do that. So the easiest way to actually decide where this bust line is gonna go when you have a bust dart here is what I want you to do is trace off your pattern. So you can see here, I've actually just traced off the uh, seam line sections here, but by all means, you can do the whole pattern too. It doesn't really matter. And I've just traced it to the waistline position. What I wanna do is take away this dart 
and put it somewhere else temporarily so that I can draw my bust line in. So what I've done is I've just drawn a slash line that goes from the middle of the shoulder seam that goes to the bust point. And then I've drawn another slash line that goes from the dart leg here out to the bust line. So this is the original dart here. This here is going to be my straight line that's joining the bust point to the lower dart leg here. Now, when I have that, done. I can slash along each of those lines and close my bust start. So closing my bust start is going to automatically move that bust start out and away. And what you're going to see here is that as soon as my bust start is up here, my bust line can be drawn straight. So I can just again do that same principle where I draw my bust line straight across perpendicular from center front. So you can see that here. And then once I have that position drawn in, I'm going to put my pattern back to where it used to be and just secure that in place. And then automatically I have the pitched position of this bust dart. So all I need to do to transfer it to my pattern is measure the distance from the base of the armhole to where that new line is, make a mark on my pattern, and then just join that to the bust point. So this automatically gives me my uh, direction for my bust line. Now, if you already have a bust dart and it's pointing or it's in above the armhole, then you don't have this problem. You can definitely just draw it straight across. This problem exists when you have a bust dart below the armhole. Okay, so that's one way you can do it. Now, if you don't know where your bust line is, it's kind of just really confusing, then don't worry about it don't draw it in. You might have a waistline and a hip line position, then draw, just draw those in. Sometimes the bust line area can be really, really confusing to draw your balance line in. So you can alternatively ignore it and just put the other ones in. You'll still have some sort of guide as to how to balance your garment. You can also add an additional, additional line here and it could be the across front line. Now the across front line can be easily found by just finding the widest point of the armhole. So what I'm gonna do here is use my bus line position here and draw a perpendicular line that goes to the widest part of the armhole. So I can do this here, and as long as it's hitting this widest part, or in other words, the narrowest part of the front, that's where you're going to then put your across chest line. Now, don't worry too much about where this is. If it lands a little bit lower or higher than it appears here, that's absolutely fine. Don't worry about it. Okay, so basically, visually, you just want to see that this is the narrowest part. You can also use this as a balance line above the bust here. And then you don't have to worry about how confusing this kind of crooked or shaped bust line will end up being, okay? So that's how I have indicated the across chest, the bust line, the waistline, and the hip line in these cases. Your grain line is always going to be really important. The grain line in this case is the same as center front. All of these lines must be perpendicular or parallel to your grain line. So we're going to move to the back because once you draw these on the front, you need to also transfer or continue them on around the back of the pattern. Okay, so here is the back of the pattern, and you can see I've also included the bust, waist, and hip position here. Now you're going to notice maybe one thing here is that the waist position I've drawn does not seem to match the marking on the pattern. And that's simply because when you choose one position for the waistline, you don't want to have them kind of misaligned. So what I did in order to transfer these points to the back is I took my front pattern piece and I basically laid it on top and I marked each of those lines. So I basically walked my pattern along the seam line to make sure that I transfer those lines. So you can see here that I just walked my pattern, I marked my, butt, my hip position here on the back at the side seam. And then I marked my waist position here at the side seam. And then I marked my 
bust line position here at the side seam. So in other words, I'm making sure that my balance lines are following through from front to back. Now, if you went the other way from back to front, that's absolutely okay too. Chances are your waistline is probably going to be misaligned again going the other way. So don't worry about it, just choose one and go with that direction. So I started with my front, which means I wanted to transfer those positions to my back pattern. So let's just go over the back here. So because I have a marking here at the side where the waist, bust, and hip line are joining at the side seam, then I can then very easily, using my grain line, draw a perpendicular line from my grain line across my back to mark my bust line position. So just drawing straight across and making sure that it is perpendicular to my grain line. In this case, I have a curvy center back here, which is why I'm not using my center back line to draw my line. I want to make sure that it's actually being drawn in a grid-like fashion. So I'm gonna do my bust that way, and I'm going to do my waist that way as well, and my hip that way, following perpendicular to the grain line. Now, when that's done, you're going to notice that, for example, the waistline does not end up meeting the waistline where they're at here. So don't worry about that. I've just crossed it out, and I've created a new waistline position here. Okay, so the next thing you want to do after we do the bust, waist, and hip position, we can also do on this particular pattern the across back and of course the shoulder width. So what I've done here to find the across back is basically once again, I'm taking my bust line, I'm drawing a perpendicular line from there and basically finding the narrowest part. So it looks like it's a little bit higher here. The other way that you can do it, which is what I'm assuming I may have done, is you can find the halfway distance between the bust line and this shoulder point, and you can also put your cross back measurement there as well. This across back does not have to meet the same level as the across front when you're wearing it. Don't worry about it, it's just a half width line, basically. It's going across just your back portion, so don't worry if it joins to the front at all. Now your shoulder to shoulder can also be measured in this case. So for this case, again, I'm going to use my grain line as the guideline here. So I'm gonna place one of the strong lines on my ruler against the grain line, and I'm going to make it intersect with the shoulder point and just draw it straight across until I meet my center back line. Okay, so that's how I got that. And then we can actually measure each of these points. So that's how I've accomplished the um, positions of the balance lines on this very, very simple pattern. Now I hope this example has helped you understand how you can prepare a regular commercial sewing pattern for fitting and give you the ability to start using the vertical and horizontal balance lines to assess fit. Be sure to tune in next week to see how it's done on a flare jacket with a raglan sleeve. Now, if you want to learn more about balance lines and how to use them for fitting, be sure to get your free copy of the Perfect Fit Guide. I'll leave a link for you on this page. I'll chat with you soon. Bye for now.